morning and welcome to Ebenezer. My name is Chris Beckman and I am the corporate chaplain for Ebenezer. And if you're watching and participating in this worship service, more than likely you're part of our Ebenezer family. We are a community of over 100 nursing homes, assisted living, memory cares, throughout the state of Minnesota, Iowa, and even into Wisconsin. And if you're watching these uh, worship services, we welcome you on this day. Today we continue our journey through the season of Advent leading into Christmas. Our opening hymn today is O Holy Night. Please join us as we sing together, O Holy Night. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voice Oh, no. continues with the litany, and I invite you, the congregation, to respond with the bold portions. Blessed are you, O Christ, Son of God. You were before time began and came into the world to save us. Blessed are you, Son of Righteousness. You shine with the Father's love and illumine the whole universe. Blessed are you, Son of Mary, born a child. You shared our humanity. Let heaven and earth ring out their praise. O mystery of the word made flesh, with all the voices of heaven we celebrate your coming as our Savior. Let men and women and angels sing of your glory. O splendor, the Father's light, with all the creatures on earth we sing and dance at your birth. Praise and honor and glory to you, O incarnate word. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel for this epiphany, the day that the wise men arrive, is from the book of Matthew, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For he observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, 
he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star that had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left them for their own country by another road. Here ends our gospel reading. Will you join with me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and Redeemer. Amen. Well, blessed Epiphany, one and all. I don't know as you're watching this how close to January the 6th that we are, but January 6th is the day that we celebrate the Epiphany. It is known also as Little Christmas. In fact, if you know any Orthodox Christians, Russians, Ukrainians, Greeks, Serbians, Romanians, uh, members of the Orthodox Christian community, they actually celebrate Christmas on January the 6th. But January the 6th marks the coming of the wise men, for the Magi traditionally arrive at Bethlehem on January the 6th, marking the end of the 12 days of Christmas. I always loved it because the site I used to serve in our Ebenezer family here in Burnsville. One time I got a wonderful gift from a family after doing a funeral, and we were trying to figure out what are we going to do with the money? Because it was quite a generous gift. And we landed on the idea of creating a set of wise men, magi. And uh, we decided that we wanted something substantial. And so by luck, we actually found a chainsaw artist in the neighborhood. And he had never created a set of magi before the three kings. But he said, I am up to the task. And so with his chainsaw, he created this beautiful set of wise men. And they were nearly life-size. They were about five feet tall and huge trunks of wood. And I loved uh, every year as we got ready for Advent and Christmas, as we would haul them out of storage and we would then, every week, move them around the campus. And it takes a two-wheeler to move each one of them. But every week, the wise men would move to a different place on campus, giving it a sense of the movement and the journey. And then finally, on January the 6th, the wise men would show up at the manger, completing the Christmas scene and connecting all the traditions around Christmas and Advent and Epiphany. One of the things that strikes me or struck me most about this gospel text this time, you know, the challenge for a lot of us is that we've heard the story of the three kings over and over again. You probably were even one of the three kings in the Christmas pageant when you were a young boy in your own community. You maybe even sang the song, We Three Kings of Orient Are. But this year, the word that kept jumping out at me is homage. How many of us have really given any idea of what it meant for the wise men going to Bethlehem so that they could pay homage to the baby Jesus? What does that actually mean? 
that the Magi were coming to pay homage. And if you heard the gospel that we just read, I think homage comes up four times. How many of us have ever used that word? Why is it there? And what does it mean that Herod also wanted to come and pay homage? And I love especially the way the gospel ends, that the Magi, after a long and powerful journey, arrive in Bethlehem, find the child and Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus, and they kneel down and pay him homage. In fact, at the heart of the word homage is the very concept of kneeling down, of kneeling down before someone or something that is important, paying homage as though I am the servant before a great king or a great leader, and to show them respect and honor, I kneel down and pay him or her homage. In fact, as we're getting ready, in much of the world is going to be watching the coronation of King Charles III, the new King of England. As we're watching that, if you decide to do that, watch to see who comes before the new king and pays him homage. And the homage will be probably a genuflect. It'll be kneeling down. It'll be curtsying. It'll be bowing. It'll be paying homage as the servants of the new king. Sometimes even in the church where we have bishops, sometimes we will even bow before the bishop and pay them homage. Could even include kissing their ring. Kings and bishops and lords and vassals. The tradition of kneeling and paying homage. And that sense of honor and respect can also include the aspect of fear. People were fearful oftentimes of their leaders. They were fearful of King Herod. He was a brutal person. And don't you find it interesting in this gospel text that Herod says, I want to go and pay him homage. We all hear the lack of sincerity. The wise men picked up the lack of sincerity. Herod expected people to pay him homage. So the fact and the notion of him saying, I want to find the baby Jesus. I want to find this Messiah, this child, so I can pay him homage. When, as we know from the story, it is just the opposite. Herod is fearful of a new king being born. In fact, one of the stories that happens during the 12 days of Christmas is the story of the Blessed Innocents, where Herod will send his troops into Bethlehem to kill every male child under the age of two with the hope of wiping out all of the children, especially the child that was to be born under the star. Fortunately for us and for our story and for the life of Jesus, Joseph, in his wisdom and through a dream, knows that Herod is going to do evil upon that town and has the wisdom and resources to be able to escape to Egypt and to save Mary and the baby Jesus. When you think about Herod and his lack of sincerity, we only need to look around our world and think, well, maybe an example of that would be Vladimir Putin. Who really believes that Putin is sincere about negotiating and peace? It was the same feeling that they were having about King Herod. Are you really sincere about wanting to go and pay homage? And as we stand at this venture point in our history, and as the wise men who gathered there, they all knew that there wasn't sincerity. And so the story says that after visiting the baby Jesus, they go home by another way, bypassing Herod. So what do we make of this today, this concept of paying homage? 
I wonder, my friends, none of us are going to get a chance to visit perhaps even Bethlehem or to see Manger Square. And certainly none of us were there the night that Jesus was born or will have the chance to pay him homage. How, too, do we in our journeys of life and faith on this end of the Christmas season, the end of the 12 days, how do we appreciate the moment of encountering the Christ child that happened 2,000 years ago? For me, I wonder if there are those moments of awe and wonder and even confusion that might happen in our lives that give us a sense and appreciation for the epiphany, for this realization that God is with us, for that experience and feeling when the wise men arrived and gathered in a barn and kneeled down on the floor and brought gifts to the baby Jesus. Have you had moments in your life where you've had that expectation, that confusion, that wonder, that awe? I think for me, the closest thing that might happen have happened for me is when my twin boys were born. And because they were twins, they were almost certainly going to come out Caesarean section. And so we knew the date and the time when they were going to be born. But I have to tell you that expectant wonder to know that my family was going to go in about five minutes from two to four was about as heightened of an expectation as you could imagine. Is that what the wise men were feeling as they came to Bethlehem? That excitement, that expectancy? And what did they encounter when they got to the manger? When my kids came out, the two boys, one was doing okay, one was struggling a little bit. And because the mom had come through cesarean section, she needed to have to go into the operating room and be stitched up. And suddenly, a new parent of babies, one is going to the intensive care unit, one is going to the nursery, and the mom is going back into the operating room. And I'm standing there wondering, what am I supposed to do? The awe, the wonder, the amazement. How much of that was happening for the three wise men as they gathered? Was it really completely so peaceful? <laughs> was it really completely so serene as we see and imagine from our lives of reading these texts? Or was there a bit of wonder and awe and maybe even chaos and confusion. Is this really the child? Is this really why we made this long journey? Is this really what we came here for? But I think having my own children and experiencing that awe and wonder and confusion, what I think I most understand about the Magi coming, the three wise men, is they saw the child. They experienced the wonder. They might have had some confusion in the midst of all the stuff that was happening, especially if there were shepherds and who knows who else was there. But I think mostly what I understand is that with the birth of my children, Suddenly, I was responsible in new and amazing ways for new lives coming into this world. The wise men, when they came, their lives were equally changed. They maybe didn't know what they were coming to encounter, but once they had met the child, once they had been in the presence of the divine, experienced the incarnation, the new life, they were suddenly responsible for it. There was no way that they could have returned without a story, without a proclamation, without sharing the wonder and awe. It was on their hearts and needed to share that, to share with all the world. 
they couldn't go back without sharing and being responsible for the story of the birth of Jesus of Nazareth. Just like you and me at the birth of your children were suddenly and unequivocally responsible (laughs) for new life coming into the world. I have a feeling that those three wise men, whatever they thought they were going to get out of that trip, were suddenly responsible for what they had seen and responsible for what they had heard and were transformed by the experience of encountering the Christ child. Maybe the closest you or I will get to the experience of the Magi coming will be the birth of our own children where you were that to happen in your lives. But it gives me a glint of what it must have been like to be so in awe and wonder of this child being born that you knew in an instant that your life was forever changed. The wise men, the magi, as they came to the baby Jesus and knelt and paid him homage, knew in an instant that their life was forever changed. We share in that wonder. We share in that awe. We maybe share a bit in that confusion. And most certainly as people of faith, as Christians of this community, we share the responsibility to tell it on the mountain, to care for all the children of the world, and to follow in the journeying footsteps of the Magi who have gone before. Blessings on that journey, my friends, and blessed epiphany. Amen. Let's sing together our hymn of the day, the great epiphany classic, We Three Kings of Orient Are. Please join us in singing, We Three Kings. confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us now pray for ourselves, our families, our churches, and our world. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. To us you have brought abundant joy. Before you we rejoice and sing. Let us pray. O God, to whom glory is sung in the highest, while on earth peace is proclaimed to all people of good will, grant that good will to us, your servants. Cleanse us from all our sins and give perpetual peace to us and to all people. Through your mercy, O God, who blesses, who blesses and governs all things, now and forever. Amen. Tomorrow the iniquity of the earth shall be blotted out, and the Savior of the world shall reign over us. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light, for those abiding in the land of death, a new splendor has appeared. Let us pray. God of love, Father of all, the darkness that covered the earth has given way to the bright dawn of your word made flesh. Make us a people of this light. Make us faithful to your word, that we may bring your life to the waiting world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, for the sake of the King of Heaven, is born of a virgin mother to proclaim the lost for the heavenly kingdom. All angels cry aloud with joy, for God has come Himself to save all humanity. Let us pray. Almighty God, You wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restore the dignity of human nature. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of Jesus Christ, who came to share our humanity, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Open your hearts now to God and receive the benediction. May the Almighty and Incarnate God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. And let us now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn today is Go Tell It on the Mountain. Please join us in singing together our closing hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Shepherds kept their watching O'er silent flocks by night Behold, throughout the heavens There shone a holy light Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in the lowly manger, the humble Christ was born. In God's in
Jesus Christ is born.